Mikel Arteta. A generational manager who has taken Arsenal from consecutive 8th place finishes and no Champions League football for 6 seasons to successive 2nd place finishes coming within inches of dethroning a relentless Man City team in his first job in senior management. Or, alternatively, an overhyped assistant who has won one FA Cup in five years, despite having a net spend of half a billion pounds during that time, and has reverted to playing Pulis ball with four centre-backs and two midfield sitters against anyone half-decent, depending on who you ask. Hey, look, it is a game of opinions. For what it's worth, and with the caveat that he probably needs to win a trophy this season just to dampen those criticisms, I think Arteta has done an excellent job. You can point to Arsenal's spending, but Manchester United, Chelsea and even Tottenham have all spent more during that time without coming anywhere near producing the levels that Arsenal have for coming on two and a half years. And much as Man United have actually won more than them during that time, any Manchester United fan who claims that they wouldn't trade places with the Gunners at this moment in time would be deluding themselves. I think that it is probably somewhat underplayed the scale of transformation that Arteta has overseen at Arsenal. I'll be honest, before making this video, I didn't fully appreciate it myself. Arteta has been at Arsenal for nearly five years, and there is almost no one from the squad that he inherited that is still at the club. That is no exaggeration, by the way, from his first starting eleven, which we're about to look at, and indeed, the entire matchday squad, including all seven substitutes, only one of the 18 is still at Arsenal, which is interesting in terms of how radically Arteta has overhauled his squad, while also making this video more interesting, in my view at least, than if half of them were still at the Emirates. Arteta's first game in charge of the Gunners was a one-all draw away at Bournemouth in December 2019, where Dan Gosling, who now plays for Westfield FC in the 11th tier of English football, scored the only goal for the hosts, who were managed by Eddie Howe at the time, their goalkeeper was a certain Aaron Ramsdale, and Dominic Solanke was an unused substitute. Good times. Without further ado then, who's never played for Arsenal, here is Mikel Arteta's first starting eleven at Arsenal, and his substitutes, and where all of those players are now. Bernd Leno, Fulham. One of the better players that Mikel Arteta inherited at Arsenal, Bernd Leno joined the Gunners for £22.5 million from Bayer Leverkusen in the summer of 2018, which, in a summer where Chelsea paid £71.6 million for Keparuza Balaga, looked like pretty good business. Leno did a solid job for three seasons at Arsenal, but Arteta, much like his mentor Pep Guardiola at Man City, wanted a goalkeeper who could play out from the back, which was probably one of the weakest aspects of Leno's game at the time. Leno, therefore, became Arteta's Joe Hart, axed in Arteta's second summer in charge, and replaced by Aaron Ramsdale, who started for Bournemouth against Arsenal in Arteta's senior managerial debut. I'm not suggesting that is why he signed him, it's just a fun fact, albeit probably not fun enough for me to have mentioned it twice now, and I definitely won't be mentioning it a third time, that would just be ridiculous. Arteta's ruthless streak when it comes to goalkeepers continued with Ramsdale, who was also dumped after two seasons, for David Raya. Leno stayed a season after Ramsdale arrived in what Arsenal call rotating goalkeepers, and what everyone else calls having a number one and a number two, where the number one plays all the time, and the number two doesn't. In the summer of 2022, Fulham signed Leno for £10 million, and he has been excellent for approaching two and a half years since. Ainsley maitland niles Leon. One of the most casual footballers on the planet, Ainsley maitland niles has 99 composure, which is exhibited in his penalty taking, and 99 versatility, having played everywhere, across both defence and midfield. Clearly, that wasn't quite enough for Mikel Arteta, or perhaps it would be more accurate to say, that the amount of game time Arteta was willing to afford him wasn't quite enough for maitland niles Arteta was actually keen to keep hold of maitland niles who started his first game in charge at right-back, but also played at left-back and in midfield under him, sanctioning low moves to West Brom, Roma and Southampton to satiate his appetite for game time in the hope of keeping hold of him long-term. Following the signing of Takahiro Tomiyasu and Benjamin White's move to right-back though, maitland niles had seen enough. In the summer of 2023, his contract expired and he joined league side Leon on a free transfer. 
Leon made a wretched start last season in what was a baptism of fire for Maitland Niles, but he now appears to have settled into life in Leon, and he has made a solid start to his second campaign, albeit still without nailing down a single position. Socrates Papastuthopoulos retired. A big name signing for Arsenal in the summer of 2018, in the sense that he has a very big name, the Gunners signed Socrates Papastuthopoulos for 20 million euros from Borussia Dortmund. A bit of a cult hero at several of his former clubs, at Arsenal are no exception, Papastuthopoulos had excellent defensive fundamentals. Dogged and determined in his man marking, fierce in the tackle, and a terrific athlete who was deceptively rapid in another era, he could have been a world-class centre-back. He still played for the likes of AC Milan, Borussia Dortmund and Arsenal, and won 90 caps for Greece, don't get me wrong, but there was a sense in which football started to leave him behind in the late 2010s, and certainly Arsenal did under Mikel Arteta. Following a solid debut campaign, in which he was probably one of Arsenal's best performers, Arteta's attempts to turn him into a ball-playing centre-back, especially at the age of 32, was always likely to be an uphill battle. Sure enough, his game time diminished throughout Arteta's first half season in charge, he only actually played one Premier League game after January, and that was at right back, and in January 2021, not having played a single minute of football in the 2020-21 season, his contract was terminated by mutual consent. Two and a half years at Olympiakos, and a single season at Real Betis followed, before Papastuthopoulos retired from football at the end of last season, aged 35. David Luiz, Flamengo. Still going strong-ish at the age of 37 with Flamengo, David Luiz and Socrates Papastuthopoulos has to go down as one of the most contrasting centre-back partnerships in the entire history of football. Whereas Socrates had excellent defensive fundamentals, but the technical ability of a donkey on an ice rink, Luiz often appeared to have the defensive instincts of Coco the Clown and a physical resemblance to Sideshow Bob, but was much more accomplished with a ball at his feet. Gary Neville described David Luiz as playing as though he were controlled by a 10-year-old playing on a PlayStation all the way back in 2011 when Luiz first joined Chelsea, but that didn't stop PSG from signing him for £50 million in 2014, a world record fee for a defender at the time, nor Luiz from flourishing following a return to Chelsea in a back three under Antonio Conte. In a back four and a centre-back pairing, Luiz reverted to type at times at the Emirates, amassing an impressive catalogue of howlers during his two seasons in North London. Luiz had the ball-playing credentials that Arteta desired, but there are only so many times that you can go flying into tackles and missing the ball before any manager is going to start to lose patience. Luiz wasn't a total disaster for Arsenal, and his status as a liability has at times been overblown but the Gunners rightly allowed him to leave when his contract expired in 2021. Luiz is now in his fourth year back in Brazil, starring for Flamengo, age 37, with whom he won the Copa Libertadores in 2022. It is pretty extraordinary to think that Arsenal have gone from a partnership of Papas Tuthopoulos and Luiz when Arteta arrived, who conceded 48 goals that season, which was two more than Sheffield United, to Gabriel and William Saliba now, probably the best centre-back pairing in the division, who only conceded 29 goals last season, which was the fewest of any team in the Premier League. Bakayo Saka, Arsenal. The only player from Mikel Arteta's first game in charge of Arsenal, who is still at the club, Bakayo Saka had recently turned 18 when Arteta arrived at the Emirates, and he started Arteta's first game in charge as a left-back. Saka went on to play a whopping 39 games that season, despite his tender age, only two of them on the right flank, which was, and still is, his preferred position. The following season, Kieran Tierney returned from injury to take up the left-back spot, and Saka began playing further forward, either wide on the left or right. It was in the 2021-22 season, the first in which Saka hit double figures, that he nailed down a spot on Arsenal's right flank, and he has since become one of the most consistent, efficient, and productive wide players in the world. Last season, Saka scored 20 goals and made 14 assists to make a combined 34 goal contributions in 47 appearances. That is only one goal contribution fewer than Vinicius Jr., who is the favourite to win the 2024 Ballon d'Or. 
Though he only turned 23 last month, Saka is already closing in on 250 appearances for Arsenal. He has won 43 caps for England already, and he won two Arsenal and England Player of the Year awards before he'd even turned 22. Lucas Torreira, Galatasaray. Ever since the departure of Patrick Vieira in 2005, Arsenal fans bemoaned their lack of biting athleticism in midfield. For my sins, I thought that Lucas Torreira could be the answer to those long-term complaints. In fairness, I still think Torreira is a player of real talent, and in his debut campaign, a fifth-place finish under Unai Emery, he was outstanding in spells. Unfortunately, whether it was the food, the climate, or anger at how Brexit negotiations were being handled by Theresa May, Torreira quickly seemed to tire of England. By his second season, Torreira was already talking about his dream of playing in Spain or back in Italy, and when his mother sadly died, he sought to move to Boca Juniors in order to be closer to home. Arsenal tried to accommodate Torreira's demands, given the extenuating circumstances, but when Diego Simeone came in for him, suddenly Torreira seemed to want to move to Atletico Madrid instead. Madrid, it should just be said, isn't much closer to Torreira's home in Uruguay than London. Following seasons on loan with both Atletico and Fiorentina, Torreira left Arsenal on a permanent basis to join Galatasaray for €6 million, Euros, which also isn't very close to Uruguay. Arsenal lost over £20 million on Torreira, therefore, but he has since won two Turkish Super League titles in two seasons playing in Istanbul. Mesut Ozil, bodybuilder. The only other retired player from Mikel Arteta's first starting eleven at Arsenal, along with Socrates Papastuthopoulos, Mesut Ozil isn't actually a professional bodybuilder. He has just radically altered his physique and has spent a lot of time in the gym since hanging up his boots. It was a joke, alright? Sue me. You don't have to tell me that he hasn't actually entered Mr. Olympia in the comments. Ozil is, simply put, one of the most gifted and intelligent playmakers in modern football. Quite rightly nicknamed the Assist King at Werder Bremen and subsequently Real Madrid, Ozil's touch, technique and vision were all out of this world. Only Kevin De Bruyne has a better assist per game record than Ozil in the 21st century, meanwhile Messi and Neymar are on par with him. It's not bad company to be in. Unfortunately, outside of a super team at Real Madrid, and in a league with super high physical demands, and at a team that was instead super reliant upon him, what Ozil couldn't do became as talked about, if not more so, than what he could do at Arsenal. It is for that reason that Ozil has such a mixed legacy in North London, which I covered in an entire video a little while back. Ozil was effectively frozen out in Arteta's first season in charge, which some attributed to his comments regarding the treatment of Uyghur Muslims in China. Arsenal denied those allegations, and Ozil's game time had already been reducing up to that point, as well as the added conflict surrounding his reported refusal to accept a voluntary 12.5% pay cut during the COVID-19 pandemic. Ozil subsequently joined Fenerbahce after his contract was terminated, followed by Istanbul Beşiktaş, but he retired in March 2023, age 34, citing injuries. Ozil now part-owns Mexican football club Necaxa, alongside celebrities including Kate Upton and Ava Longoria, as well as a much smaller stake in Wrexham. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, al -Kadzea. A marquee signing for Arsenal in January 2018, as not just literally, but also figuratively a big-name signing, unlike Socrates Papas Dutopoulos, although he was also signed from Borussia Dortmund for a then-club record £56 million. Aubameyang was electric in his first two and a half years at Arsenal, scoring 70 goals in 109 games, including in Arteta's first six months in charge, when Aubameyang scored both goals in the FA Cup final against Chelsea to win the Spaniard, his only major piece of silverware to date. That didn't stop their relationship from souring worse than the milk that is used in the Russian delicacy Prostak Vosha, though. I find that you don't get anywhere near enough Prostak Vosher analogies on football YouTube channels these days. Subscribe for more. Aubameyang was left out of the Arsenal squad in March 2021 for disciplinary reasons, and from there, the relationship soured worse than John and Lorena Bobbitt's. If you don't know, please don't Google it. 
Aubameyang was subsequently stripped of the Arsenal captaincy, and midway through the following season, his contract was terminated by mutual agreement. Aubameyang joined Barcelona on a free transfer, before Chelsea brought him back to the Premier League for 12 million euros. Aubameyang scored just one Premier League goal at Stamford Bridge, he spent last season starring for Marseille, at age 35, he now plays for al Qadzia, one of the more obscure Saudi Pro League teams, whose average attendance is almost as high as League 2 Chesterfields. Reese Nelson, Fulham. The only player from Mikel Arteta's first matchday squad, other than Bakayo Saka, who is still contracted to the club, Reese Nelson is currently on loan at Fulham. A graduate of the Gunners own youth ranks, Nelson has made 90 appearances for Arsenal, most of them under Arteta, and this is his third loan spell away from the Emirates. Stints at Hoffenheim and Feyenoord preceded it, and Nelson has so far scored two goals and made one assist in six games at Craven Cottage. Nelson is a wide player, at his happiest wide right, which means that breaking into the first team at Arsenal is going to be a serious uphill battle. And I would expect him to follow Emil Smith-Rowe and Eddie Nketiah out of the door in the summer, for that reason, almost regardless of how he performs at Fulham. But hey, I could be wrong. It has been known to happen. Granit Xhaka, Bayer Leverkusen. Completing what was a midfield five, and one that I have ordered bizarrely, don't blame me, blame the faceless website that I lifted Arsenal's starting 11 from that day, Granit Xhaka spent seven years at Arsenal, racking up more appearances for the Gunners than the likes of Robert Perez, Gilberto Silva, and Ian Wright. As with several players in Arteta's debut 11 though, Xhaka's legacy at the Emirates could probably best be described as mixed. Undoubtedly talented, he scored some absolute bangers, but was probably always misused to a degree, he had some moments of total head loss, and his best season was probably actually his last one, before departing for Bayer Leverkusen. Xhaka may have left Arsenal when both he and they were playing their best football, claiming that the club wanted to get rid of him, but he has been vindicated in his choice of destination. Absolutely outstanding last season, Xhaka made 50 appearances and was integral to a Bayer Leverkusen team that went invincible domestically, winning both the Bundesliga and the DFB Pokal, as well as reaching the final of the Europa League. Alexander Lacazette, Leon. The last name on Mikel Arteta's first starting 11, Alexander Lacazette started as a lone striker at Bournemouth back in December 2019, flanked by Reese Nelson and his partner in crime Pierre Emerick Aubameyang. Arsenal are one of only two clubs that Lacazette has ever represented, along with Leon, who he joined Arsenal from for a potential club record 60 million euros in 2017, and returned to following five years at the Emirates in June 2022 on a free transfer. Lacazette is another player with a mixed legacy at Arsenal. For some time, Arsene Wenger had been in search of an upgrade for Olivier Giroud, trying and failing to sign the likes of Luis Suarez, Karim Benzema, and even Jamie Vardy. It felt like Lacazette was a very expensive plan B then, and just six months later, Arsenal signed a Bamiang for even more money than him. Lacazette wasn't bad at Arsenal, but it certainly felt as though he regressed from his final 37-goal season at Lyon, and though he formed an effective partnership alongside Aubameyang, it always felt as though the latter was the main man, and their goal-scoring records reflected that fact. Lacazette scored 71 goals in 206 games for Arsenal, enjoying some great collective and individual moments, but the move cost him his spot in the France squad, he never played in the Champions League, and he departed following a season in which he scored just four Premier League goals. Back at Lyon, Lacazette has rediscovered his goal-scoring touch as the main man, age 33, with 55 goals in 82 games since his return. That is it for Mikel Arteta's first starting 11 at Arsenal, but off the bench that day, he introduced Joe Willock, who now plays for Newcastle, following a £25 million move in the summer of 2021, Shakodran Mustafi, who was fairly abysmal as a signing for Arsenal, and retired in the summer just gone, age 32, following 12 months without a club, and finally Nicolas Pepe, who became Arsenal's 79 million euro club record signing in the summer of 2019, but failed to live up to expectations and departed on a free transfer after four years at the club. What an atrocious piece of business that was. 
Pepe joined Villarreal on a free transfer in the summer, following a single season in Turkey with Trabzonspor. It's a shame, really. He feels like a very Turkish Super League sort of player, doesn't he? Wasted in La Liga, if you ask me. Arteta's four unused substitutes were goalkeeper Emiliano Martinez, who now plays for Aston Villa, and who has won a World Cup, two Copa Americas, the Yashin Trophy, the best FIFA men's goalkeeper, and a FIFA World Cup Golden Glove since leaving the Emirates for £20 million, another Greek centre-back, Konstantinos Mavropanos, who left Arsenal in a €3.5 million Euro move to Stuttgart in 2022, before his current club, West Ham, signed him for €25 million Euros just 12 months later, Midfielder Matteo Guendouzi, who left Arsenal in a £9 million move to Marseille in 2022, which was about the same price that the Gunners had paid for him in 2018, who now plays for Lazio. And finally, Academy graduate Emil Smith-Rowe, who had an excellent 2021-22 season, but lost his place at Arsenal following a string of nasty injuries, and was sold to Fulham for a potential £34 million in the summer just gone. That means that there are twice as many players from Mikel Arteta's first matchday squad at Arsenal who now play for Lyon as there are at Arsenal, thrice as many who now play for Fulham, and the same number who are now professional bodybuilders. Alright, alright. He's not a real bodybuilder. I'm sorry for ever mentioning it. Hey, at least I didn't bring up the Aaron Ramsdale starting for Bournemouth against Arsenal in Arteta's first game in charge thing all over again. Then I would look really stupid. <laughs> That was a bit of a throwback to when I used to make Where Are They Now videos fairly frequently on this channel. I don't really do them anymore, but I found that one quite interesting since it illustrates the intense squad turnover at Arsenal and lack of trophies notwithstanding the pretty impressive job that I think that it is fair to say that Mikel Arteta has done. Manchester United, by comparison, still have six players from their 2019-20 season, Manchester City have eight, and Liverpool have nine. Anyway, that is it for today's video, but thank you all very much, as ever, for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. I sincerely hope that was the case. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments, and of course, it goes without saying, make sure that you are subscribed and have notifications turned on not just for this channel, HITC7s, but also my second channel, Alfie Potts Armor, where I just uploaded my fourth video ever. Um, uh, but yeah, both of which should be about to appear on your screens now, along with a couple of videos that you might enjoy watching after this one, including the most recent upload to that video where I visit the German city with the lowest GDP per capita. I know, I know, it probably doesn't sound that interesting, but g give it a go, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, you can also find me on uh, Twitter, Instagram, or threads by the username at HITC7s on all three, should you wish to do so. And all of those links, plus a whole lot more, should be down in the video description below. Cheers.